You're one of those people too, so don't you say that. You are no. right. Wait, I did not say that. I didn't, I did not say that. Hello everyone, and welcome to a brand new video series. If you are one of our subscribers, you may have seen us tease some information about this. I decided to get into the hobby of CNC woodworking. Basically, using a CNC router to create beautiful things with wood instead of the old school way of hand planing and everything else. So this is going to be an entirely new video series, one we're going to sort of spin off into its own separate thing. It's going to have a lot of information about hardware, software, and everything in between. So it's going to be a fairly decent long series, a lot of good information, and I think everyone out there may find it useful. That's also going to serve the purpose of getting feedback from all of you about things that you may know about that I just don't know because this is sort of a new hobby for me. Welcome aboard and let's go down the rabbit hole. What is this video going to contain today? Today's video is not going to be any of the build process. This is going to be basically sort of a CNC 101. We're going to talk about basically what is CNC woodworking. After that, we're going to go into what are the main types of CNC routers you can get. So I'll do a little bit of an explanation about that and which ones are best for what types of people. Depending upon what your plans are for the hobby, you're going to want to look at different routes. And finally, I'm going to start going into some of the basics about which option I'm choosing and sort of just really start off the beginning of what the next phase is going to be. The next phase of the project, the next video is going to be a build series showing you the option that I picked and starting to build it out. So I'm going to give you some basic information about that just to kind of uh, tell you what's going to be upcoming. If you think you might be interested in seeing that, then hey, perfect time. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel, the usual stuff. And that way, when that those new videos come out, you'll know about it. Uh, doesn't cost you a thing, helps us out immensely. We greatly appreciate it if you do. CNC 101, what is CNC woodworking? So basically, if you think about it, in the olden days, everything was hand done, hand planes, hand saws. And a lot of traditional woodworkers like to go, oh, I don't want to use any of these fancy electric tools. I'm going to go old school. Uh, other woodworking is the sort of what you would call getting away from the hand tools using all electrics where it's all planers and routers and all this stuff that is modern. CNC woodworking is kind of taking it to that next level. You're basically saying, hey, I'm going to use a wood router because that's basically all a CNC router is. It's just a hand router that you attach into a system that is controlled by your computer. So it's basically bringing the modern computer era into the hobby of woodworking. At its core, a CNC router is nothing but what they call a, I think it's Cartesian system. It's an X, Y, and Z system. So you have a an assembly, for lack of a better word, of metal or wood that is controlled by a computer that can take a wood router and move it in that three coordinate system, side to side, back and forth, up and down. The computer then takes the software program that you use and it converts that into a system that it can move the router around just the same way you would do by hand. Everything that the system is doing, you can technically do by hand. But let's face it, unless you're like Data from Star Trek, you really can't get in there and make it perfectly symmetrical and everything else. The computer allows you to do that in a way that it's perfectly shaped, perfectly depth, everything is just beautiful. The downside is you have to be able to program the computer to do it. Now, it sounds a lot worse than it is depending upon the software. That's where we were talking about earlier that there's going to be a lot of software involved, but the software, depending on how much money you want to spend, makes it easy to put together to do that kind of stuff. The way this works is you get load up your software program, you design out what you want the system to make, and your computer then controls your CNC router to carve shapes into wood. That at its core is basically what CNC woodworking is. A lot of the signs that you see on it, different places that have been carved out, that's the kind of thing that you'll see that used for. A lot of the intricate little Christmas ornaments and things like that, 
So at its core, that is basically what CNC routing is. I said there were different options about how to achieve your own CNC router. Really, there are three primary methods to going about CNC woodworking. One is to just flat out buy a machine. There's a lot of companies that are selling machines that are completely built, completely assembled. All you do is set it up and go with it. The next option down is to buy a kit. There are companies out there that will basically sell you, it's kind of like the Ikea of the woodworking world. They basically give you all the parts. Uh, very often, there like no physical instructions. You go to their website, there's a wiki, shows you how to build it. You could technically tweak it up because it's a, it's a standardized system. You, you don't like the way they just sold you a kit. You could add extra parts, change it up a little bit, do it yourself. The final option, which is sort of what got me into doing this in the first place, is the complete from scratch build it yourself. And that's where you're completely making up your own design because at the end of the day, it's just electronics controlling motors. And as long as the motors can move the way they need to move, it doesn't really matter how you get there, you can build your own design from scratch. So let's start at the very top. And this is sort of what I saw out there. You know, you're, you're scrolling through the internet and you see some fancy woodworking CNC router. You're like, oh my God, I gotta get one of those. So then you go out and you're like, oh, it's $5,000. Okay, guess I'm not doing that. And the wife says, no. So real quick, you're like, okay, way too much money, not gonna do that. But turns out there are some other options. And that was sort of how I got into this. And this sort of carries us all the way down to the other end of the scale. Is as I'm out there looking around, you stumble across this YouTube video out there somewhere. And in fact, many of you may have seen this one. Uh, DIY Bills is the channel. And he has a video, basically build your own five foot by five foot CNC router for less than a thousand dollars. And that's what got me into this hobby. As soon as I saw that, I'm like, I'm doing that. The problem is you real quickly find out that, yeah, you can't really build one for less than a thousand dollars. Yes, he did. But every time you start going out and researching, you're going to find out, oh, well, the price of this went up. Oh, this isn't available. I can't get this in my country. Inevitably, there's always going to be a lot of problems. And in fact, one of the reasons I wound up going with the middle option that you see here is that as I was trying to do that first option of building my own, I hit so many roadblocks and you're going to see a lot of video of the roadblocks that I ran into. So in case you're thinking about going that way, I'm going to tell you all the reasons that you may or may not want to. So if you do decide to build your own, some of the things you have to worry about is you're on your own. There are no, this is just what you do. So you're going to have to go out and source all your own parts, figure everything out from the ground up, YouTube videos. See, one of the reasons that I decided to go that route is I have a degree in electronics. I wasn't scared of all the electronics connections, the electrical connections that had to be done. And I had the tools to go out and do the other parts. What happened in that case is I hit a point where I was looking at spending a lot of money because I couldn't get some of the parts that they were doing at the same price. In fact, that very thing happened to us. We have a video that you've never seen. How to add wheels to your wood lathe so that you can move it around in your shop for 15 bucks. I did it. You've never seen that video because as soon as I got started putting it together, the price went up about three times. And now those wheels are like 15 bucks a piece. So that's why you've never seen that video. And you're gonna run into a lot of this just following YouTube videos out there trying to build your own stuff. If you decide to build your own, just know that's what you're looking at. There's not gonna be any help. You're purely watching what everyone else out there has done and trying to figure out how to make it work in your own world. But if to you that is just as much of the hobby as everything else and you really enjoy doing that kind of stuff, then that's gonna be the kind of thing you might wanna look at doing. But if you're kind of in between, you may want to look at the option that I eventually wound up choosing, and that is to go with a kit. What you see here is a kit that I got from Maker Store. It is, a, hey, here's all your parts. All you've got to do is put them together. Here's an instruction manual out on the wiki. 
If I had chosen to use their electronics, they would give me all the electronics. All I had to do was just plug everything in and you've got a kit. You can't do it quite as cheap as building it yourself, but it's pretty darn close. We were looking at spending $1,000 to do the DIY build setup. This kit cost me $1,000. Now his included all the electronics, so I have the extra cost of the electronics. So all said and done, I'm gonna be probably be about $1,250 to $1,500 into this project once everything is done. But I have the freedom of I can tweak things up as we go. I have the additional aspect that I don't have to completely invent my own thing. It was already done. So basically, hey, here's your kit, plug the parts together and get you up and running. And you can tweak it later on because one of the things that I actually plan on doing is attempting to increase the size of this system. So where in Australia, you can buy a 3000 millimeter system and they'll send it to you. You can't get it here in the US. So I got a 1500 by 1500 system that I'm going to basically expand out. Did I waste 1500 bucks? The short answer is really no. The long answer is it depends on whether or not I abandon everything. And say, ah, I'm tired of this. I'm not going to do it. As long as I keep going, no, I have not wasted 1500 bucks. To give you an idea, I started off building my own system. I dropped about 250 bucks into that part of the project and real quickly was discovering, hey, these parts are not available. I can't get them. They're way more expensive. And that's when I decided, oh, look, I found for a thousand dollars, I could add in a complete kit that I could add to my electronics and just build my own system. And that's the route I went. Now, every time you do a different route, you're going to find out, oh, look, I didn't think about this. I didn't think about that and slowly the prices can go up depending upon what you bump into. Again, this is a hobby. If you want to start a company, just buy a machine. Everything's already there. You have a problem with it, you send the whole thing back to them. If you're getting into this, it's because you enjoy this as the hobby itself just as much as the actual woodworking aspect. This is a series and basically Come along for the journey and you'll find out if I have wasted any money or not. Like I said, I think we're good. And I think when all is said and done, everything is going to be good to go. I am happy with the brand that I chose. I'm happy with the price that I paid. Overall, the company has been good. We had a couple missteps. They have been good at fixing things so far. Uh, we were missing a couple of the grub screws for holding. Well, they I call them... Uh, set screws they call them grub screws in australia i guess but the screws that hold things in a couple of those were missing they sent those to me in the mail we had some missing threading on some of the extrusion rail third party company manufactured this for them so sort of outside their control their vendor messed up with them uh, they actually sent me a tap in the mail so that i could tap them out myself and even gave me a little bit of a store credit um, for a future purchase which i do plan on doing anyway in fact, one of the reasons that I went with this company is that they have something currently that no one else does. So to give you a little bit of a teaser of some other stuff we're going to go into, there is a standard now by a company called Open Builds, which basically put together a extrusion platform that is a standard that anybody else can go out and copy. So another company which I went with, Maker Hardware or Maker Store, depending on whether you look at the website or what the name that's on things. But one of the reasons that I went with their design is that they have added to and improved that and have something that no one else does. And that is, they got rid of belts. So with a system like these, they have timing belts that are used. Because for, for CNC to work, it has to be very accurate. So they actually use timing belts, very similar to the same belts you use in your car, but it's just long pieces of it and gears that control the movement. When you're using the belts, you can only make them so long. And with age, they stretch, they wear out. But Maker Hardware, Maker Store, designed an actual plastic, well, it's not really plastic, but it's a plastic type material that slides into your extrusion rail that lets you convert from belts to gear. The name of this platform was Oxgear. And that 
allows you to basically make it a longer length. With a belt, you have a limit. You can only go so long before those belts just do not work well. But with the gear system, it's no belts to worry about, no belts are gonna stretch, break, and you can keep on adding and make it basically as long as your software can handle. So that is one of the reasons that we went with this platform. We, uh, so far, it looks like it's gonna work out pretty well. We'll see what happens. Which video should be coming out next? Next, we should finally get into the build process showing the system that I went with. As you can see, we're kind of about halfway through. We're kind of in the final phases of putting this together. And this is just the mechanicals. This is just all the mechanical pieces that are there. I'm still going to have to hook up the electronic portion, but most of the mechanical stuff is complete. But yeah, so that will probably be a fairly long video showing the entire install process of all these mechanicals. Um, and, and we may go a little bit more in depth to the, the issues that we ran into just so you can see what we, what we hit and how the company resolved it. And then after that, then we will get more into the connecting of all the electronics, the connecting of the software, and then finally near the end, sort of into the, hey, these are the problems that I ran into of what got me here in the first place. That's a lot of cutting room floor type footage that, oh, I'm going to be doing this. And then we went up hitting roadblocks and stopping it and that footage is just laying around. So hopefully near the end, we'll put together all the, hey, these are the gotchas you should look out for because they got me. Welcome to this video series. If you want to see more, please subscribe and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. You spent $1,500 on this? No, duh. I spent $1,000 on this. Wait, but I thought those were things that you bought before this. Well, technically, these are the things that I bought before this. Wait. These, Are you using those? Not on this project. Wait. So you, you bought you bought this. I, you bought four of these. I, I bought these with the eight millimeter shafts that didn't work out well. So then I bought these with the six and a half millimeter shafts. So after And I'll use these on a different project later. Such as another CNC table. That it has like a laser on it instead of the... Who wasted money, y'all? Time, time, time to pull the wife answer out of my butt here. You can put a price on my happiness? That was, that was straight out of the wife handbook. <laughs> How dare you put a price on the happiness and joy I have received from working on this? But yes. I... No. Me? Holy crap, this is heavy. Or am I just weak from the virus? No, you're trying to pick up two of them. Let me guess, it's still heavy? Just <laughs> aluminum. <laughs> but it's still heavier than I thought it was. I, mean, I can't look <clears throat> two together. Well, and honestly, this is one of the reasons for going this way. When you use the wood, wood can expand and contract. Oh, and wood's expensive right now. Right now, wood is almost more expensive than aluminum. So that was the other thing. Wood, he, wood would go back. He built his two years ago back when wood, prices were yeah. way cheaper on wood. So this way I've got aluminum. It's sturdy. It's going to last. Okay. I don't feel like returning it. So that's, I don't feel like returning it. I'm just one of those people. I don't return things. I know. You're one of those people too, so don't you say that. You are no. right. Wait, I did not say that. I didn't, I did not say that. What she meant to say was you were not wrong this time. I did not, I did not say those three words. All this is going at the end, right? I know what you're all thinking. You're thinking, by George, I understand. No, they're not. You made me understand. Did I? Yeah. Seriously? Uh-huh. You're just making me feel good, aren't you?